Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and I came across a rather nifty little video capture device the other day called the Narvitech. And this works like a lot of other inexpensive video capture devices work in that you take an HDMI video source, whether it's a camera or a game console, and it will take that HDMI and basically convert it into something that your computer will see like a webcam. And it does that through its micro USB port here. And I'll demo that functionality for you in a second. And these things now are kind of a dime a dozen. You can find a lot of cheap devices that do video capture for your computer. But what this one adds is an SD card slot. So in addition to working like a capture device for a computer, it can also record directly onto a micro SD card. And it actually does better than I thought it would do uh, at that task. And we're going to look at the functionality of this device here in this little mini review today because this might be useful to some folks. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this was sent to the channel free of charge from the company that makes it. I guess it's called Narvi Tech. All the opinions you're about to hear, though, are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor is anyone reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this device is all about. There are some limitations to this device. The first is that it cannot send video to the computer and record it at the same time. It is one or the other, and the mode that it's in is determined by this switch here on the side. So when I have PC enabled, it will send the video out to the computer like a webcam. When SD is enabled here, the video output to the computer turns off and it gets routed through the built-in H.264 encoder that's inside the box here to record onto the SD card. But you can't capture video on the computer and record it locally on the device at the same time. That was a bit of a bummer. Uh, the other limitation is that it only has an HDMI input it doesn't have a way to loop the video back out to a monitor. So if you were going to be using this to capture game footage, for example, just to record it, uh, what you'll need is a splitter like this one uh, that will take HDMI in, have one of those outputs go to the box here, and the other go to a monitor. And we'll demo that with the Nintendo Switch in a minute. The good news is, is that it'll take a maximum of up to 1080p at 60 frames per second and we'll test out the ability of it to record at that uh, resolution and frame rate in a few minutes here. But what I wanna do first is hook it up to this video camera that I've got here on the desk. And I've got an HDMI output uh, coming out of this camera. Right now it's doing 1080p at 30 frames per second. And off camera right now is my Mac and I've got Skype running on it, which of course usually just works with webcams. And we've got our built-in FaceTime camera picking me up now. But what I'm gonna do is plug in, let's get this back on camera here. I'm gonna plug in this USB cable that's connected to the Mac to the back of the captured device. We've got it in PC mode. And when I hook it up here, uh, what should happen when I switch back to my Mac is that it will go to the video camera. And here you go. You can see that we've got uh, the video camera here outputting as a webcam to Skype. And if I were to do this with Zoom or OBS or any other application that takes webcams, this will work with it and it's just using the built-in OS X drivers. In this case, if you had it on a Windows computer, no drivers required there either. It'll just show up like a webcam and display whatever is plugged into that HDMI out into the app that you're using. Let's take a look now, though, at its recording capability, and we're going to hook it up to a Nintendo Switch running a game that is playing at 60 frames per second. All right, so we're playing Fast RMX here on the Switch. This was one of the launch titles, but it runs super smooth here at 60 frames per second. And while we're playing here, I'm going to hit the button on the side to capture a still frame or two. We'll hit a couple of buttons there to do that. And then what I'm also going to do now is hit the record button and that will start recording. Now when it's recording, it will blink green and that's how you know everything is being recorded properly. There are a few uh, error messages you will get through that blinking light if there is an issue. Uh, so if it is uh, detecting an error, you'll get a blinking red uh, light there. Otherwise, if it's just blinking green, it should be in good shape. So we're just gonna let this run out for a little bit here. And when it's done, we're gonna pop the card out and plug it into the Mac and see what we get. All right, so we got my Mac up here and these are the files that it just captured. I've got a handful of JPEGs here that look pretty sharp actually, not bad at all. And then we've got the video file here and I'll play this back from my video system in a second so we can get the best 
uh, quality. But as you can see here, it recorded a uh, 60 frames per second video at 1080. And it looks like the data rate is about 16 megabits per second. Uh, so all in pretty good there. Let's pull up the file here and you can take a look and see how it recorded. Now this is a 30 frames per second video that you're watching right now. Uh, but what I'll do is I'll upload this to my extras channel uh, as a 60 frames per second video so you can see exactly how this looks. But I think it's a nice little uh, device here and it can really work as a decent little recorder when you need one. And it's something I think that might be useful to have in your tool bag uh, if you are in need of a recording device while you're on the go. Again, it's got some limitations in that it can't record and send its output to the computer at the same time. And of course, you're gonna wanna get one of these splitters, which aren't that expensive, especially the 1080p ones if you want to do some game capture with it. Now, of course, for professionals, I would caution you about buying these low cost devices. You never know how long they're going to last. The company doesn't have a worldwide presence for support. So it's kind of a buy at your own risk thing. But I think for folks doing uh, the basics, this might be a nice little device to consider. That's gonna do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, Tom Albrecht, Chris Allegretta, David Hockman, Brian Parker, Mike Patterson, and Bill Pomerantz. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.